take our Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. <clears throat> My intent, I think, with the morning service today is and to start the new year is just to let the Word of God do the speaking this morning and let God's Word be the authority of all that's done here and under God's Word let it speak for itself and let it do its talking to our hearts and we just simply can then, have, we're either going to obey it or we're not going to obey it. Um, but the authority is going to be the Word of God uh, here today. We want to run a lot of scriptures um, but I hope it'll be a blessing to you, help to you. I know that with the end of one year, many people look back and try to assess their year, and maybe they ask, was 2016 uh, a good year? Was 2016 successful? And they judge that by many different things. I kind of followed the social uh, you know, networking and, the, and that kind of stuff. A lot of people said 2016 was such a bad year. Uh, many bad things happened in this year, and what a, what a bad, you know, bad year. And, uh, Roy McElroy, a golfer, said, wake me up when it's 2017. You know, he, he, he's, in other words, I've had enough of 2016. And, and you know, that's interesting uh, because, I, you know, last time I checked, the year actually is not alive. There's no, <laughs> it doesn't have a, a, you know, it can't do anything to you. Um, but people, that's how judge, they judge things. They look back at the year and say, was it a good year? Uh, or was it a bad year? 2017, we're already looking. Man, it's the first day. Praise God, what, what a great decision you already made. Uh, the first day of the year of 2017, it's recorded in God's uh, book. He knows where you are. And he knows you're, you go to Baptist Church. And uh, praise the Lord for that. But 2017, well, is it going to be a good year? <clears throat> is it going to be a bad year? You know, truthfully, we don't know what kind of year it's going to be. You just don't know. We don't know if we'll be here tomorrow. Uh, just, nobody knows what's going to happen. Uh, but will it be a good year? Who knows? But what I can say, and what the Bible can teach us today, is that if we will follow God's word, it will be a good year. If you'll follow the teachings of Scripture, and simply obey them, and put them priority in your life. Yes, you have a job. Yes, you have a family. Yes, you have a husband. Yes, you have a wife. You have responsibilities. God's not saying forget all that and become a hermit out in the desert and just read the Bible. That's not what he's saying. Rather, as we're going to see in the life of Joshua, when we have a task, when we have responsibility, no problem. That's life. But it's, it's having the Word of God to lead you and guide you as you go through these tasks. It's having that, that anchor of the soul that teaches and instructs and guides and so that's what I want to get across this morning. The Word of God will guide you if you'll let it in 2017. The Word of God will guide you if you'll let it uh, in 2017. Well, how will it guide me? Well, let's look down through here. Let's begin reading in Joshua chapter 1, and we'll read verses 1 through 9. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. That would be good for the UN to read. I don't know if you've been following the politics, but that'd be a good one. Just right, I mean, boom, it belongs to the Israelites, God said. Verse number three, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That was, that was written to Joshua, but let me tell you something. Jesus said to us, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. He'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world, praise the Lord. Verse number six. 
Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do to all that, according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. The word of God will guide you in 2017, if you let it. Let's us have a word of prayer this morning. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this historical account of your dealings with the nation of Israel, and more important, your servant Joshua. God, how you gave him a task, and no doubt he had uh, many things going on. But in the midst of it all, Lord, you draw, drew his attention back to the word, that he would meditate in the word, that he would draw strength from the word, and that the word of God would lead him and guide him. And God, help us as we enter in this new year. We don't know what lies ahead of us. Lord, many families represented here today, and we have no clue what 2017 holds. But God, we know who holds 2017. And we pray this morning, and call on you that we would be diligent and faithful to read your word, to mark it, and Lord, let it lead and guide our lives. May we uh, fall in line with what your word says. May we meditate therein day and night, just like your servant Joshua of old did. And God, we have the promise that then will come success, and then will come prosperity, and our way will be prosperous. And so, God, we pray that it would be so today. Help us as we study your word, and would you please speak to our hearts. And, God, if there's someone here that doesn't know you as Savior, if someone's here that's without you, Lord, I pray that even now, Holy Spirit, you might to begin to do your work of conviction and bring them to the decision point today, Lord. Give them another opportunity to put their trust in the Son of God, the Savior of all mankind, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that they would do that today. Help us as Christians to draw closer to thee in, in the coming days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Word of God will guide you in 2017. If you'll let it, the Word of God will guide you. Well, how will it guide me? Well, uh, let's look down through there. Number one, the, how will it guide me? It'll guide us if we'll meditate in it. We need to meditate in it. Look there in verse number eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. God wanted his servant Joshua to get a hold of the Old Testament, uh, first five books really, because as Moses was living, Moses was right down. So Moses wrote down the, the Torah, Genesis, the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Joshua had that, and God was telling him, you read in that and you meditate in what I have to say in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Read those books. Meditate therein. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Uh, the Jews, it was the practice of the Jews to read Scripture aloud and then talk about it to themselves and among one another. Uh, the word meditate here, the Hebrew word meditate, means to mutter, uh, mumble. <laughs> and and the, the idea is you, you're, it's on your lips. It's, it's a part of who you are. You should mumble about it all the time. You should mutter about it. Meditate in the Word of God. And that's what God was wanting him to do. Uh, Joshua's strength and courage would come from meditating on the Word of God, believing its promises and obeying its precepts. Now we didn't, now Joshua's not going to just, they're not going to just give the land to him. He's going to have to walk in there and we'll find out in the book of Joshua, he's got to fight the Jericho, I mean he's got to go to Jericho and then he's going to have a, a loss at Ai and then he's going to have battles and he's got to prepare. 
Uh, they sent in spies. They knew where they were going. They, there was all kinds of preparation, yes. But ultimately, God was calling him back to this truth. Meditate day and night in God's Word. And while we all have jobs, I'm looking out this morning, I know you got jobs and you got responsibilities and you have deadlines to meet and you got complaints from customers and you have all kinds of things going on. Then you have a family, amen. <laughs> you got a wife and you got a husband and you have sick children and you have rebellious children and you have disobedient children and you got, I mean, this is life. And, and God, God's not asking us to forsake all this and, and just become like put our head in the sand and become a hermit or do like some of those old time guys did. They would climb up. One guy, he, he became famous. He climbed up on top of a 30-foot pole and lived on top of the pole for 30 years because he was trying to you know, just get away from the world. Well, I understand separation from the world. You know, We ought not to be like the world, praise the Lord. But Jesus said, I don't pray that you take them out of the world but that you keep them from the evil. We've got to be in the world. We've got to live our lives. We've got to raise families. We have to uh, be in relationships. We have to make decisions. But through it all, in 2017, what if we just get a hold of God's word again? What if we just meditate on it day and night? Like Joshua, God said to him, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate Therein, day and night. But it's not enough. Point number two is not enough just to meditate on it. Point number two is you've got to be a doer of the word. You've got to do it. Look what it says there. Meditate therein day and night that thou mayest get a big head and think you're special. Is that, that's, that's, that what y'all, that's not what mine says. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. God wants us to be a doer of his word. It's, it's simplistic, but when we read something from the Word of God, we, we read it, we can think about it, we can chew on it, we can mutter it, we can mumble it and get a hold of it, but that's not where it stops. That's not the end-all, be-all. God wants us to then do it, to, to, to do it. So when we read something that says, um, be filled with the Spirit of God, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, wherein is uh, debauchery, where is all kinds of wickedness. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Man, that's nice to meditate on. Uh, yeah, just like wine controls people. You go to the airport and they got spirits. That's what they call it, wine and spirits. And it's a controlled man. The Bible tells me I'm meditating on this, that I'm not to be controlled by that, but rather be filled, be controlled by the Spirit of God. That's good. And you can meditate on that. And then you can go right out and <laughs> go get drunk if you wanted to. But that's, so that's, that would be meditating, but not according to do it. But God wants us to meditate on it, and then make a decision, yeah, I'm done, with, I'm done with that. I'm done with the bar scenes, I'm done with the alcohol, I'm done with that kind of stuff. I'm going to be filled with the Spirit of God from now on. I want to be not only a hearer, but a doer of the Word of God. And James has something to say about that. Turn over in the New Testament uh, to the book of James, chapter 1. James, chapter 1, and look at verse 19 through 25. Let's read these together this morning. No, let's read them responsively. I'll read, the first, I'll read verse 19, you read verse 20 aloud. And then I'll read verse 21, and you read verse 22 aloud, okay? And then I'll read verse 23, and you read verse 24 aloud, and then I'll finish up with verse 25. James chapter 1 and verse 19. I'll get us started, and, and you read verse 20 together. Everybody got it? All right. Talking about doing it, being a doer of the word, meditating on the word, not just to meditate on it, but to uh, do it. James chapter 1, verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity, that means superabundance, of naughtiness, lay that stuff aside, 
and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Mm. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And so James is simply telling us the person who reads God's word but doesn't do anything about it is like the man or the woman who goes and looks at a mirror in the morning and says, boy, my hair is out of place or I need to put some makeup on there or uh, you know, my lipstick's off or I need to put some lipstick on or whatever. I, I mean, I've, those days for me are gone. I just <laughs> Like, I got my glasses, okay, put my glasses on, I'm good. But you look in the mirror, and if there's something in the mirror in the morning that looks at you and says, you need to fix this, you, you, got, you, know, you need to take care of that, you do something about it. You do what the mirror tells you to do. And James is just drawing a beautiful illustration that when we look into God's word, it's like a mirror. It doesn't tell you what you want to hear. It tells you exactly what God says for you to hear. And then we have to make the decision. Am I going to do what the Word of God says, or am I not going to? For example, uh, husbands, love your wives. <laughs> I just don't die. <laughs> you don't know my wife. But that's not the point. God says in his perfect mirror, husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Husbands. Love your wives. Unconditional. It's not if she is nice, if she, but, but she's changed so much since we got married. Well, probably you and I have too, have we not? But that's not part of the deal. It wasn't like, well, yeah, well, I do unless you never change. <laughs> God's word says, husbands, love your wives. Love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Husbands, we ought to be willing to die for our wives. We ought to be willing to set aside our life for our wives. We ought to love them with, with a love like Christ loved the church. Amen. That's a high standard. And too often I know in my life I fail to meet that standard. But it's not about that. It's about do I understand what God's saying and then am I going to do it? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. <laughs> submit time. <laughs> you don't tell me nothing. Whoa. We didn't write the Bible. This is the perfect law of liberty. Right. Written by God. It's inspired of God. And God has said, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. That means let them be the head of the home. Don't you, you don't be the head of the home. You make sure he's the head of the home. He is going to be the one that ultimately will give account to God for uh, the family. The husband and wife is like a, a president and a vice president. The husband is the president. Ultimately, the responsibility, according to God, falls on the husband. He will give the account. Did you lead the family the right way? The wife won't have to answer that. The husband will have to answer for that. Did you lead in family devotions? Were you praying for your children? Were you leading them? Were you sending them to church or did you bring them to church? I mean, husbands have a lot to answer for because we're the head of the home. But the wife is supposed to submit herself, supposed to encourage him, supposed to uh, say, you know, how can I help him be the best man of God he can be? How can I uh, support him to be the leader of our home? How can I submit myself unto his uh, leadership and under his authority. Well, you, you, preacher, it's 2016. We don't do that anymore. Well, maybe that's one of the problems we have in our world today. 2017. That's 2017. Yeah, it's 20, that's one of the problems we have. Wives are supposed to submit unto their husbands. Husbands are supposed to love their wives. That's God's plan, and it will work if you just follow what God says. Husband's the president. Wife is the vice president. 
Ultimately, the decision falls on the husband, but the husband would be really foolish not to consult with the vice president. A president would, of a company, a CEO, would be really not smart if he made decisions without consulting with uh, the, you know, the CEO uh, or the vice president of the company. Because together, hey, the Bible says you are as one. We are as one with our mates. Uh, we, we work together with God. But we're just talking about simply, if you let the Word of God guide you in 2017, not just being a hearer of it, but a doer of it. Meditating and obeying it will make you, uh, will make thy way prosperous, the Bible says. Look at back in our text, Joshua chapter 1, uh, verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to, uh, do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I would say here, meditating and obeying God's word will bring you prosperity and will bring you success. Let me caveat that by saying it's not necessarily what the world tells you is prosperity and success. They have a different term. <laughs> they define success and they define prosperity differently than the God of heaven defines prosperity and success. The world's going to tell you that you've got to make more money. The world's going to tell you that you've got to become more powerful. The world's going to tell you that unless you buy that yacht and you've got that $400,000 home, then you're nothing. That's the world, and if you didn't do that, then you're not prosperous. But God says, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. God says he puts, see, God puts a premium on the spiritual things. God puts a, a premium on, on loving your neighbor. God puts a premium on being a good dad and being a good mom and being a, a servant of God. That is becoming prosperous. That is when you are successful. Now, that's not good. I mean, I'm just telling you, see, God has his definition and the devil has his definition. And if you ever wonder who's got the right definition, Let's make sure we understand God's definition is the right definition because that's the way real prosperity are. If you set out on your own to become prosperous and successful, you may achieve your goal and live to regret it. A lot of people do. Boy, they, they sell out, they sell their souls to the devil to get what they want and then they get it and they hate life. And they wish, oh, and in their latter end, I guarantee you they think, I wish... I wish I would have gone God's way. I wish I would have just listened to what those that were older than me that tried to teach me stuff. But the Scottish novelist George MacDonald said this, In whatever man does without God, he must fail miserably or succeed more miserably. In whatever man does without God, he must fail miserably or succeed more miserably. Because without God... Uh, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. That's success. Success is measured by observing and doing what God's word has said. Amen. See, you can look back at the end of 2017 and say, and while everybody else is crumbling around you, what weeping, oh, 2017 was such a bad year for me. The Christian can look back and say, wow, I had a really successful year. Oh, you must have made some good trades with stocks. Uh, no, I just... I, when a, the Bible said to go to church, so I went to church. It was a good year for me. <laughs> oh, you, you know. Joshua, in the years to come, whenever Joshua faced an enemy, tempted to be afraid, he would remember, listen, that he was a man with a divine commission. And his fears would vanish. Because when he got in the battles, and it was time to fight, he could, go, he could rely back on the word of God. That he was supposed to be meditating therein day and night and observing to do according to all that is written therein. I got, I got through point number two, and I got five more points. <laughs> all right, I'll just show you, I'll share, this, share this last thing, and we'll be done. 
God always put a premium on his word. And even when it came time, he said, he was telling Moses, now at this point they didn't even have a king, but he said, one, eventually you're going to get in the land and you're going to look around at everybody else and you're going to want a king. And, and then God says, this is what I want the king to do. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17. And let's read verses 14 through 20. This is what God has set up for his king. Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse number 14. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me, Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. Watch now, here's, here's what God wants the king of the nation to do. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much the Lord hath said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. God is laying it out. I don't want the king of the nation uh, to be going after money. I don't want him to be going after the things of Egypt. I don't want him to be going after things of gold. I don't want his heart to be turned. I don't want him to be going after women. I don't want him to be going after these things. A little bit. Look at verse 18. And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. God wanted the king to literally take out a pen and paper and copy word for word Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That was what God wanted the king of Israel to do. He didn't want the king to become wealthy. He didn't want the king to become, turn his heart turned away. He didn't want the king to be wheeling and dealing in, in horses down in Egypt. He wanted the king of the nation to get out the book of Moses and to copy it. Verse 19, and it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. God said, I want him to make a book. I want him to copy out the law, word for word. You ought to do a study sometime on how the Jewish nation uh, preserved God's word. It is said that when the priest would come to the word Lord, Jehovah, they would stop, put the pen down, go take a bath, come back, get a brand new pen, and write that word Lord. And when they're done, throw that pen away, go take another bath and come back and then begin writing again. They reverenced the word of God in a way that we know not of, but we should know something of it. But they reverenced the word of God. But the king was supposed to write out a copy of it, read in it, and look what it, what it was going to do to him. Verse number 20, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren. The word of God will teach us humility. The word of God will teach us, hey, you're not better than your common man. You're supposed to love your common man. The king of Israel could, hey, I'm, he could be lifted up. And God said, no, I'm giving you this task because I don't want you to be lifted up. I don't want you to go after money. I don't want you to go after silver and gold. I don't want you to think you're better than everybody else. I don't want you turning aside from the right, from the commandment to the right hand and to the left. People ask me all the time, do you ever going to change your music? No, we're never going to change our music. Are you ever going to change what Bible you preach out of? No, we're never going to change uh, what we do here. Are you ever going to change your service times? No, 
Never. We're going to meet here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. We're going to preach out of the King James Bible. And we're going to sing the hymns of the faith. That's what we're going to do. Because God's word sets stuff up like don't turn to the left hand or to the right hand. Read in the book of the law and just do what's written in the book of the law. But pastor, uh, we could do a lot more things and get a lot more people. That's not the point. We're not here. I mean, we're here, yes, to, I want people to come in. But ultimately, our goal is an audience of one, the Lord. We must seek to please Him. And what pleases Him is not compromising our standards. That's not pleasing to God. What pleases God is faithfulness to what He has simply asked us to do, commanded us to do. And so that's why we'll stick with the King James Bible. That's why we'll stick with the hymns. That's why we'll stick with uh, good fellowship. That's why we'll meet for Sunday school. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, prayer, amen, praying. This church has got to be a praying church. And on Wednesday nights, we meet together as a collective body, and we pray for one another. And we pray for our nation, we pray for our leadership, and we pray for our missionaries. These are things that are never going to change. They can't change, because God's done called us to never change. Don't turn to the right hand, don't turn to the left hand, but do what I have commanded you to do. And so that's what we want to do. 2017, the Word of God will lead you. It'll guide you. It'll strengthen you. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy Word. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. All of it, not some, not, yeah, the New Testament's inspired, but that stuff in Genesis, mm, no, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means it's all of it, all of it, from the beginning to the end, cover to cover, and I even believe the cover, Holy Bible, amen. Cover to cover, it's all inspired, that means God breathed. It's all the Word of God, and it's all worthy of our eyes and our attention and our obedience and our study and our meditation. And in 2017, when it's all said and done, we could, if God gives us the grace and He tarries His coming, if we finish the year 2017, we can look back and with some assurance and with some steadfastness say, it was a good year. It was a prosperous year. Oh, really? Did you get that promotion? No? Well, then that your year was terrible. No, my year was really good. I, you know, I watched the Lord work in my life as I simply followed his word. I watched how he took care of my family. I watched how he blessed me with another baby girl. <laughs> you know? Well, your stocks must have really gone up. Are you kidding? <laughs> I don't know. Who cares? Success, prosperity, the world has its definition. God has his definition. And if we want to have a prosperous 2017, and I hope you have a prosperous 2017, happy new year, prosperous new year, it'll come when we just simply do like Joshua was commanded to do. Read therein, day and meditate on it, and then do what God wants you to do. Father in heaven, we thank you again for this day today, and we thank you for this new year. And Lord, it just seems like a new journey is set before us, a new path, and God, we don't know what will end up happening, but Lord, help us to simply meditate in your word, read your word. Lord, we're all different, different stages of our lives. Help us, God, to find the plan of reading and the, and the time of reading and all those sorts of things that, that work in our hearts and work with, with who we are, but God, with the collective goal of simply doing and obeying what your word has us to, uh, would have us to do. Lord, we commit now the invitation to thee, and I pray that you would uh, help us to make some decisions, concrete decisions, that we're going to be men and women of the book. Help us this morning, we do pray. In Jesus' name, amen.